Hello, today we're going to be doing our 9.1 notes, angles of quadrilaterals and polygons. So our objectives are students will be able to find missing angles in a quadrilateral and students will be able to find the sum of angles in a polygon. So we have two explorations, we have two links here. We want to move the vertices of the quadrilateral around and observe what happens to the angles, make conjecture about the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral. So remember, conjecture is a guess. So what kind of guess? Um, can we come up with the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral? So let's go ahead and take a look at them. So here's our first activity. If I were to move these around, right, and it, if you look down here, it tells us um, if we add all the angles together, what they equal. I'll just move it around a little bit. So what I notice is no matter where I kind of move these, I can make it super small even, and it'll still be 360 degrees. I can make it a lot bigger, and it still is 360 degrees. And if you see, the side lengths are changing, right? So like, I'm currently making those really small. So we have 4, 9, 17, and 10, and it's still 360 degrees. If I change that a little bit, it's still 360. All right, let's take a look at this one now. So this time it gives us this um, circle at the bottom. So remember, circle is 360 degrees all the way around. So we're, if we add them all up, it creates an entire circle. So as we can see, those proportions end up changing. As we, you know, see, I make that one angle super big, but it still equals 360 degrees. Now, don't flip it like this. I know it does allow us to do that, but we are working with a quadrilateral, and we need to make sure we can see all those four sides, and we're not making, like, those extra sides that we see there, and that we're dealing with those um, inside angles. All right, so the conjecture that I come up with here is that all the angles... Add to 360 degrees. No matter how you change it, no matter what the side lengths are, it'll always be 360 degrees. So the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is always 360 degrees. So it doesn't matter what the side lengths are. If we have a quadrilateral, we know that all of the angles add up to equal 360. All right, so let's go ahead and try a couple examples here where we have to find a missing angle. So all we have to do, I like to start with one angle and make my way around. Since I have that question mark already circled, I can say question mark plus 85 plus 95 plus 120 should give me 360. So it doesn't matter what they are. If I just add up all of the angles together, it should equal 360. All right, so if we go ahead and combine all my like terms, so subtract my 85 from both sides, subtract my 95 from both sides, and subtract 120 from both sides, all right? So we have question mark equals 60 degrees. So if we subtract all those numbers, we end up with 60. So if we were to plug that back in, adding all four of these numbers together should equal 360. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. So remember, these little square things on the top and bottom are 90 degrees. So what that means is I have 90 plus 90 plus 146 plus W equals 360. Once again, it doesn't really matter what order you add them in. I really could have, I could have done W plus 90 plus 146 plus 90. No matter how you add them up, it should still equal 360. I like to start one way and just kind of make my way around the shape until I hit all of the angles. All right, so once again, if I take 90, 90, and 146 and subtract all of that from 360, we'll end up with W equals 34 degrees. All right, three and four are you tries. Go ahead and give them a shot. Let's go ahead and try three and four. Pause the video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Here's three and four. So I did the same thing. I kind of just set them all up. Um, and then absolutely, of course, if you need to, you can take it step by step and do minus 125 and then minus 63 
and then minus 90. So you don't have to do it all in one step if you don't want to. I did it here just because since it is that addition and subtraction, I was able to just plug that into my calculator. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So our next couple examples, it is the same exact process of taking each of the angles, adding them together to get 360, but this time we have a variable. So we're still treating it the same, but we're, this time we're solving for a variable. So let's start with 70. So I'll go ahead and do 70, and let's make our way this way around the shape, plus 23x minus 5 plus 14x plus 110 should give me 360. So even though I have those variables in there, I still should be able to add them all up together to get 360. Um, it would be the same thing if I were to say this is A, B, C, and D. Even though I wouldn't be able to solve for anything, I could say that each of these angles still add up to 360. So it doesn't matter what's in the angles, you still add them all up together to get 360 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine my like terms. So I have 23x and 14x. When I combine those together, I'll get 37x. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the inverse operations to combine all of these terms here. So subtracting 70, adding 5, and subtracting 110 will give me 185. All right, then we'll go ahead and divide by 37 to get me x equals 5. And we're just trying to solve for the variable. We don't need to plug it in to solve for anything. We just wanted to know what the variable equals. All right, let's go ahead and try that again with number six over here. Let's go ahead and start with angle W, so that's 90 plus 11x plus one plus 12x plus 10 and then plus 75 and it should all equal 360. So just like when we were working with these kinds of problems with our triangles, we just are equaling to 360 instead of 180. All right, let's go ahead and combine my like terms. So I have 11x and 12x. That will give me 23x. And then let's go ahead and combine all of our non-x's. All right, so we'll add those together and then subtract them all from 360, which should give me 184. Then we go ahead and divide by 23 do those inverse operations to get me x equals 8. Okay, so the exact same process as we were doing um, in 1, 2, 3, and 4, but this time we just have more terms inside a couple of our angles. All right, so go ahead and give 7 and 8 a shot. So go ahead and pause the video, try these ones out. 7 and 8. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So with seven here, and it highlight my like terms, we have four x, three x, and ten x to get me seventeen, and then I have negative ten plus five plus ninety minus fifteen. Do all those inverse operations from three sixty. Two hundred ninety divided by seventeen isn't a whole number, and it's not a pretty decimal, so I just left it as a fraction. All right, and then with eight. We do get a decimal here, so we have 3x and 2x, and we have plus 10, plus 65, plus 1 at 25. Take all that away from 360. All right, and so then we ended up with 5 equals 157. This isn't a whole number, but I only had one decimal, so I went ahead and just kept that there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number nine. So we want to find the measure of the largest angle in the quadrilateral shown below. Um, so the first thing, before we can find the largest angle, we have to find x. So once again, let's go ahead and set up our equation. So ax plus 3x plus 30. Oops. All right, and then I have plus 9x minus 10 plus 5x plus 20. 
it's still being weird. I'll try to fix that here in a second. And so we want that to equal 360. All right, so once again, we'll go ahead and combine all of our like terms. So I have 8x, 3x, 9x, and 5x. And then 4, bringing over to the 360, plus 30, minus 10, and plus 20. So when I combine all of these terms together, I'll get 25x is equal to 320. When I divide by 25, I'll get 12.8. Okay, so remember, we aren't just solving for x, we want to find the largest angle. So if you can point out the largest angle, then of course you can automatically do that. With some of these, um, I notice that, you know, I'm multiplying by my x, and 9x is definitely the largest, but I am subtracting 10, but if we think about what we're multiplying by, it is 12.8. So I would have to be subtracting by more than 12 in order for 8x to be larger. But just in case you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure, it does not hurt to find every single angle. So if I did 8 times 12.8, so remember for all of these, all I'm doing is plugging in x, so I'd have 8 times 12.8, which gives me 102.4. So if we go ahead and find all these angles, I have 102.4 degrees. Angle C ends up being 68.4 degrees. D is 105.2 degrees. And angle A is 84 degrees. So if you needed to, you could definitely find all those individual angles. I can see that angle D is the largest. So I would say angle D equals 105.2 degrees. All right, let's go to the last page of our notes for today. So example 10, all four angles of a quadrilateral are congruent to each other. Find the measure of each angle in the quadrilateral. So we know that all of the angles and we have four angles because it's a quadrilateral, that all angles are equal to one another. So let's just go ahead and say that they're all equal to x. So I can say x plus x plus x plus x should equal 360. We can combine all those x's together because they're all the same, right? So we have 4x equals 360. Divide by 4, I'll get x equals 90. All right, so if I have a quadrilateral, and we can think of like, you know, a square, a rectangle, all those angles being exactly the same, and they are 90 degrees. So the sum of the angles of a polygon can be found using the formula 180 times n minus 2. All right, where n is the number of sides. So here, if we take a look at 11, we have an octagon. So we do have to know how many sides are in an octagon. So that's 8. So I would do 180 times 8 minus 2. We'll just plug that straight into a calculator. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 180 times 6 is 1,080. So an octagon, all the 8 angles should add up to 1,080. Hexagon, that is six sides. So I will have 180 times six minus two. So that's four times 180, which will give me 720 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at 13. We have a nonagon, so that's nine. Nine minus two, multiply that by 180. <coughs> so that would give me 1,260 degrees once I plug that all into a calculator. So for these problems, all you need to know is how many sides are in this particular polygon, and then you just plug it in to your calculator. All right, so go ahead and try 14, 15, and 16. So pentagon, decagon, and quadrilateral. All right, here is 14, 15, and 16. I wrote the 180 backwards, but it's still the same thing. I wrote it on the other side, not necessarily backwards. I wrote it on the other side of my parentheses, but it's still multiplied by 180. All right, now next, the measure of one angle of a regular polygon can be found using this formula. And so we're still going to have the 180 times n minus 2, but we are going to be dividing 
by n, where n is the number of sides. So if we think about that, right, let's go ahead and take a look at 17. So assume all the angles of a hexagon are congruent. So this is for a regular polygon, a regular hexagon. Find the measure of one interior angle of the hexagon. Now, if you scroll up a little bit, we already found the degree of an entire hexagon, which is 720. But we're going to go through the process because maybe we didn't find that beforehand. So I'm going to have 180 times hexagon is 6 minus 2 all over 6. So we did find that that was 720 degrees. So the reason we're dividing by 6 is because we have 6 angles and they are all congruent to one another. So I have 720 divided by 6, which will give me 120 degrees. So what this is telling me is that each angle in my hexagon is 120 degrees. If I add all of the angles together, I should get 720. All right, so go ahead and try 18. So we're trying to find the measure of one angle of a regular pentagon. So pentagon is 5. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 18. So we have 540 divided by 5, which gave me 108 degrees. So for these ones, it's kind of nice if you took a look up here. We have the values up here. So sometimes it does go in that order of you're finding, you know, what is all the angles add up to and then you're like, okay, well, what is this one particular angle that I'm looking for? So sometimes you have to find all those things. Sometimes you don't, but this does give us kind of two answers in one. All right. And that is the end of 9.1. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask your teacher and have a wonderful rest of your day.